A few months after the World Trade Center attacks on September 11th, a strange message appeared on a US Army computer that read, Your security system is all nonsense. I, Solo, will continue to destroy at the highest levels. This message was the beginning of a complex search for one of the most dangerous hackers to ever exist. Throughout history, there is a lot of shocking information about American society. Please do not get me wrong and follow me till the end. For example, many Americans believe in conspiracy theories and alien creatures and believe that the American government and NASA is hiding it from them. And this point is what turned an ordinary little boy named Gary McCann into one of the most dangerous hackers in the world. In this video, I will tell you his story and how he was able to hack the Pentagon, the American Space Agency, NASA, and also the Ministry of Defense. And what is the mysterious thing that he discovered after he hacked into NASA? Because of him, they decided to shut him up and put him in prison forever. Gary McKinnon is a 40-year-old British man accused of committing the largest military and government hacking operation in history. In electronic crime records, there are only a few like Gary McCann. His arrest led to a long legal battle that attracted the world's attention, and his name was in the broad newspaper headlines for many months. Gary faces a sentence of up to 70 years in prison on charges of hacking into the Pentagon, NASA, the US Army, the Navy and the Air Force between February 2001 and March 2002. All this while he was sitting in his bedroom in North London using a cheap computer and a modem to communicate. But the most dangerous thing he discovered and what made him break his silence was what he found in NASA records. Gary was born in Glasgow, Scotland on February 10, 1986. Gary lived in Scotland until he was six years old. His father worked in the computer industry. He learned about the world of technology through his father's job, which is the point at which it changed his life. Gary became interested in computer security, especially after reading the book, The Hacker's Handbook. Gary got his first computer when he was 14 years old. He loved playing games and learned to use the basic programming language. By his teenage years, he was proficient in programming and computer systems. He would spend long hours fiddling with machines and devices, dismantling them, then assembling them, buying damaged devices and repairing them. Gary says, from the age of 14 to 17, I was completely blind, learning programming and creating my own games. I was interested in graphics and artificial intelligence. At the age of 14, he taught himself programming video games, whose events take place in outer space. He joined the British UFO Research Society and found a community of like-minded space enthusiasts when he learned that his stepfather grew up in Bonnie, an English town famous for its UFO sightings. He would sit with him for long hours and ask him about everything he was watching in an attempt to get as much insight as possible. Information. It was a place that was fascinated by outer space. He was a cheerful boy and he would ask his parents strange questions about the distance, for example, between the Earth and the Moon, between the Sun and distant galaxies, and the scientific names of stars and galaxies. It was the kind of things that a young child would not talk about. It was completely unusual. In 2000, Gary entered the world of hacking. While he knew technology, McKinnon was also interested in unknown things, conspiracy theories, and aliens. He became fascinated by the idea that governments were hiding evidence of the existence of living beings in space. After leaving school, McKinnon worked in several different jobs, but his passion remained for computers and unidentified flying objects. Constant and never separated from his mind, he was an introverted person, isolated in his room, and most of his free time was spent researching sightings of unidentified flying objects in the sky and reading books on this subject, which has many mysteries and secrets. With the growth of the internet at the beginning of the new millennium, McKinnon's ability to access information and communicate with others who share the same interests as him increased. In the beginning, he chose to target the government and the American military with all the hacking methods that he learned, because he believed that they had evidence of the existence of unidentified flying objects coming from space, and also concealed evidence of the existence of advanced technology outside the planet Earth, such as infinite free energy systems that could revolutionize the world. Gary believed that this technology was subject to strict secrecy by the American military industrial complex to maintain its power and control over global energy resources. Gary, under his pseudonym Solo, accessed computers by operating a port scanner. For example, television sets contain channels, while the computer contains web ports. Port 80 is for web browsing, port 110 for collecting email, port 25 for sending, and port 139 for logging in to computers running Windows. 
Gary was able to scan 65,000 devices in less than 10 minutes, and after contacting government systems, he ran a code and came to an astonishing and shocking discovery. Many federal employees had failed to change the default passwords on their computers. He told Al Dalam newspaper, I was astonished by the poor security rate on those devices. Gary installed a program called Remotely Anywhere, which allows him to remotely control government computers. Gary was browsing the computers in his free time and moving or deleting files as if he were having fun. Because he was able to monitor all the activity on the computers remotely, he was able to exit the moment he saw anything else that entered the computer, like a thief exiting a window when he heard the owner of the house entering. Between February 2001 and March 2002, and from the house of his uncle and his friend in London, Gary, under the name Solo, infiltrated nearly 100 computers. These devices belonged to the Army, Navy, Air Force, NASA, and also the Ministry of Defense, and his method of infiltration and penetration was relatively simple. He exploited the weak passwords and security protocols to access the systems. He often used the username administrator and searched for devices that did not contain password security. Copying during this process was a terrible amount of files and passwords. At some point in his internal warfare, he brought down the entire Washington DC network of the American army, which led to about 2,000 computers being out of service for a period of three days. US Attorney General Paul McNulty described his campaign as the largest military computer hacking operation ever and his name made headlines around the world. His only goal was relatively innocent, which was to find evidence of the existence of unidentified flying objects and technology, a controlled future, and secret government plans related to extraterrestrial life. Gary claimed that he was motivated by the desire to uncover the truth, and it was never his intention to cause any harm. Gary's curiosity in searching for the truth led him to find a person named Stephen Greer, a famous scientist and researcher in the field of unidentified objects. He is the founder of the Unidentified Plane Project, an organization whose main goal is to expose the government cover-up process related to unidentified flying objects. What motivated Gary most in the hacking and infiltration operations was Stephen's allegations regarding testimonies of government and military personnel who saw unidentified flying objects, as well as alien technology. Gary claimed that he had found a list with non-terrestrial officers in the US Navy. He found a picture of an unidentified flying object in the shape of a cigar studded with geodesic domes. This is the picture that he said he could not save because it was written in Java. He told the Guardian newspaper in 2005 that he ended up wanting more and more complex security measures. It was more like, I used to love playing computer games and I still love them. It was like a real game. It was very addictive, but what was hidden from him was that his story had been discovered without him knowing. At exactly half past eight in the morning, in March 2002, the police arrived at the home of his friend's aunt in Crawley, where he was still living. The police took his computer, his ex-girlfriend's computer, her aunt's computer, and four other computers that he was fixing for people. Gary said, I was asleep for an hour. After I had been up all night doing the usual things, I thought I was dreaming. Gary was taken to a police station, Holloway Police, where he was interrogated for a long time and in the end he confessed, but at first no charges were brought against him. That day, his mother's phone rang, and he said to her on the phone, I have been arrested. His mother's throat spasmed when she heard this sentence, and this is a normal and normal thing that any mother would feel, so she wondered what it is the thing that her son Gary was involved in. He told her not to worry, and said that the cybercrimes unit in the United Kingdom had arrested him under the Computer Misuse Act which stipulates a relatively light sentence of community service for six months. He told her in all goodness that he did not need the man's lawyer, he did not know what he had gotten himself into, as he was not involved with the British government, but rather with the government of the United States of America, and that sentence that he said that he did not need a lawyer proved that he was a naive person. But the question is how they discovered him. Gary said that his hack was discovered at the time he was downloading a picture from NASA's Johnson Space Center of what he thought was an unidentified flying object. He literally said, I don't know any of them, but I assume they are very skilled programmers who use the internet language TCPIP, which is a low-level language. I assume they are men who cannot be discovered. In 2005, the United States moved to hand over their whereabouts in accordance with the extradition treaty that was concluded after the September 11th attacks to help bring them to justice. The US Department of Justice does not care about his strange motives behind the hacking operation 
and says that the damage he caused was severe. He is accused of causing damage worth more than $700,000, that is, approximately $5,000 per device, and deleted at least 1,300 user accounts and operating system files. His deletion of important files was the reason behind the disruption of the U.S. Army's network in Washington, D.C.E., for three days. Gary said he did it by mistake. The Department of Justice claims that McKinnon disrupted government functions significantly and endangered American defense and national security. In interviews conducted after his arrest, Gary said that he was a fighter for digital freedom in the world. His goal was to expose lies and secrets hidden from people. He saw his actions as a moral duty towards humanity. In the beginning, Gary faced a sentence that reached 70 years, remember? His mother said that when his family heard the news, they were stunned and frightened, and as the news spread more on the internet in the British media, people began to protest that the punishment was harsh against him, so his mother organized a campaign to help him. With amazing sources, one of the women saw Gary on television, and being a specialist doctor, she knew directly that Gary had signs of Asperger's syndrome so she called his mother to suggest that he undergo a psychological examination. Indeed, Gary agreed to undergo a psychological evaluation by one of the most prominent experts in the world, Simon Baron Cohen, director of the Autism Research Center at the University of Cambridge. Through his in-depth research on autism, Baron Cohen became an expert on the link between Asperger's syndrome and engineering. He says that the majority of people with Asperger's syndrome are skilled and geniuses at hacking, because one of the things they have in common is understanding systems, including computer systems. Aaron Cohen found that more than 50% of people with Asperger's syndrome have a strange obsession with technology, physics, and space. He also discovered that children with autism are more likely to have parents who are engineers than typical children. He speculated that the rise in cases of autism spectrum disorder may stem from the tendency of modern engineers to marry people in the same field or who have the same ideas. After a three-hour examination, Baron Cohen found that McKinnon's condition was a perfect match for this syndrome. He says, he literally has the classic patterns of Asperger syndrome. Gary McKinnon has a very narrow attention span and becomes completely obsessed with searching for information about UFOs. The other classic feature was this social daze and not thinking about how others might view him. Asperger syndrome is a form of autism. It's a group of conditions known as autism spectrum disorders. This condition currently affects one in every 110 American children. Researchers say that the diagnosis of these problems is increasing faster than the diagnosis of any other developmental disorder. Medical researchers still do not understand the cause and have no idea what treatment people with Asperger syndrome usually have. They are very intelligent and many of them have a proficient understanding of complex systems, which has prompted scientists and researchers to study the strange connection between autism and engineering. But on the other hand, those with Asperger's syndrome have great difficulty integrating into society and tend to become isolated and introverted, adding to the difficulty in understanding the impact of their obsessive behavior. It is possible that his criminal behavior was the result of a psychological disorder, and they asked the courts to sentence him more leniently after the news of Gary's diagnosis with Asperger's syndrome spread. Like lightning, he became a global symbol of this strange syndrome. Thanks for watching and see you soon for a new topic. Do not forget to hit that subscription button to help us grow. Bye-bye.